So for purposes of um, mocking up the uh, build with the K35 dash pad and all that, we, can put the, we put the controls on. I'm going to go ahead and take those off. We also have these handlebar clamps that earlier drilled and tapped, um, ready to attach the dash pad once we get that far. I'm going to go ahead and move along with this. Before I do, I just want to point out this really cool kit that we came across some time ago. And it's a, it goes M3 through M12. It's a, it's a tap set for tapping holes. And let's see, you can probably see it best with the larger ones. Just to show you, this is like a progressive tap system. So you can see how this one is really kind of has a, has a well, it's a deep recess on it. It's a very shallow. It's just going to take a, and put the basically a very thin thread. Then you pass the second stage through, cuts it a little bit deeper, and then finally the third stage, and you've got a really good cut. And with, by doing this three-stage tap process, especially when you're going to like an aluminum casting, it's just fantastic because it gives you really sharp uh, threads without having to turn, reverse, turn, reverse to get the shards out. It really just goes in smoothly, pull it back out, put the next one in, and it progressively cuts the thread. It's really cool. So it's something that we started carrying too now, and it also comes with the properly sized drill bits. For example, to do the 12 millimeter hole, just for example, you need 10.2. And to do the um, M3, you should be using a 2.5. Anyway, all the drill bits and everything's included in here. So enough, enough about that. We'll get back to this handlebar. And so I'm going to go ahead and undo what we did before and take these controls back apart. They need to be cleaned. And I just put them on there before to mock things up. So it comes right off there. Now, also want to point out there's a little thing called the, the grip wedge, and it's located right in here, this little guy. Most of the time, they come out with the uh, control, they don't fall. But sometimes they, boom, fall out and you can lose them. It's a pretty important part. It has a little recess where the pinch bolt goes, and what it does is so that when you tighten the, the uh, bolt on here, not only does it pinch around the handlebar, but this little grip has these little serrations in here that sort of push into the bar itself and keep the bar from turning. So always be mindful that that part is there and either keep a good eye on that it stays put or put it in a place where um, you know where it is. But that's something to be careful of. Okay, now to remove the master cylinder, there's just these two bolts here. You, you just need an Allen wrench to remove these two. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to get these off. They can be really tight, especially if they've been on there for a long time. There it comes. All right. So yeah, so a little bit crusty in there from all the years and the um, master cylinder or the brakes were working okay, but still Really, you want to start with, with all the safety features working as best we can. So you look on the bottom. The first thing you want to do is see what size master cylinder you're dealing with. This one is a 13, and it's obviously stamped or has a 13 in there. Conversely, here's another one I have with a 15. So you see they look identical, and they are, from outward appearances, identical, but there's a different bore diameter. So it's important to know that before you order the repair kit. We do have the, all the different sizes available. So just look at that. You, before you even take it apart, you can get up underneath and see what size master cylinder that you have. And then the repair kit basically looks like that. So we'll go ahead and take this part out. These are made by the original manufacturer, which is Magura. And uh, they're the ones that make these, and it comes pretty much all pre-assembled, <coughs> ready to, to install. But first, you want to clean this all up. To take the master cylinder apart, you're going to need some snap ring pliers. 
go in and grab that snap ring. There we go, and it comes out just like that. And then the piston can be removed. As you can see, it looks quite identical to the new one, other than the, if you can f actually feel that the seals are kind of hard. New ones are much more pliable. Yeah, so it's just a good thing to do. I'm just going to put a rag in there just to, to get most of the brake fluid out and have a look inside. All right, so <clears throat> there's some linear scoring going up and down and there's some kind of glazed parts in here. But what I don't see is any real bad pitting and that doesn't surprise me because the brakes actually worked pretty well. But so all we need to do is we, instead of just putting the new cylinder in like that, they really ought to be honed. And so to do that, we use these flex hones like this. They come in different sizes depending on what um, size, what diameter master cylinder you have. And you get these at uh, a lot of different places. That's something we currently offer, but um, auto parts store usually have them. And yeah, the, the way that I like to do that is put in a drill and put in a solvent tank for lubrication and just run it through a couple times. We're gonna do that in just a second. Before we get to that point though, I'm just gonna disassemble the rest of this master cylinder, take the, the uh, reservoir off. You find a screw on the bottom. There we go. You can see little signs of corrosion here from the, from the aluminum, but this thing looks great. It's, we'll clean it up, it'll work like brand new. So get started on that. Okay, I've got this uh, bore brush. I'm gonna just run that through to clean out any debris that's in there. And this is one of those things where there's probably a lot of people have a different way of doing this. It's just, I've done it this way for a long time. There's honing oils, all kinds of fancy schmancy things, but I'm always in the solvent tank cleaning up this part no matter what. And the solvent actually works okay as a lubricant. So just get that a little bit wet and run that in just like, it's kind of like this a couple times. And actually that could likely be just about enough. I'm just gonna have a, one quick look. Hang on a second. It's just about enough. You really don't want to take off any more material than you absolutely have to. You just want to kind of break that glaze and get an even surface. I think maybe one more pass will achieve that. Yeah, that looks good. That's all I'm going to do. Ready to reassemble. Right on, it, it cleaned up really nice. It's going to work just fine. And uh, paint's still in pretty good shape. This thing's just ready to put back together. So I've got the new repair kit here. I'm just going to pull these two bits off. They come into play a little bit later. And from the caliper rebuild we did the other day, I've got still some of this Brembo lubricant and there's plenty in here to finish this job too, which is kind of cool to know. But if you didn't, we also have mentioned before the ATE, uh, official ATE brake cylinder lubrication paste. Um, best to use something like that. You could just assemble it with brake fluid. It's another way, a lot of schools have thought on this, but this special brake lubricant is a good way to go. Put a fairly sparing amount on the seals. This also helps to make sure that the seals go into the cylinder without getting kind of kinked up or anything like that. It should be pretty sufficient. And it's as simple as just putting it back in and reinstalling the circ clip. And here once again, the circ clip has a rounded edge and a sharp edge based on the way it's manufactured, which is basically stamped out of a sheet of steel, you want the sharp edge facing outward. 
So you just push that in, stick the snap ring in. And just make sure that the snap ring is fully seated in the groove. All right, should be good to go. And then this O-ring, take. you want to get rid of that and just put a new one of those on after you've cleaned this up. And then we'll just put this all back together again. Everything's all cleaned, cleaned everything before. Okay, now on this handle, this little metal shim comes out. There's a replacement with the kit. And then there's a rubber seal here that you want to remove. And you'll notice that it has a little step in it. Step goes in like that. New end is provided with the kit. So it's, there's a lot of gunk in here all from over the years. Also, the pivot needs to be cleaned. So before this goes on the bike, I just want to clean this thing up a little bit. So just a couple things here. You can go ahead and take the brake light switch off. Remove this pin here to take the, the brake lever off. That will want to clean and lubricate. Brake lever as well. Get that all cleaned up. Notice that there's a little wave washer on there in the recessed side of the brake lever. So retain that. And prior to cleaning, I'm just going to go ahead and disassemble the throttle sleeve again. Screw out, the cover comes off, the cam for the throttle mechanism, and basically all these parts just need to be cleaned. And so there's no sense in wasting your time watching me do that. I'm going to clean everything and keep going. It turned out great. Pretty clean. And I'm going to go ahead and put these parts back together again. I still have a little bit of the grease that works just fine for this application. I'm going to put a little bit around the out, outer piston too so it slides nicely in that little grommet. Okay, so I put the grommet in there and drop the new little washer in there. Push that back together. As for the brake lever, clean out the pivot points there too. Basically just clean the heck out of everything, always, when you have it apart. I got everything pretty well squeaky clean. My mother would be so proud of me. And I'm gonna soil it up with my favorite stuff, LM47, so it's lubricated properly. And uh, just basically touch a bit of this on all the moving parts. Don't forget on the contact point where the lever hits the master cylinder. A little bit on there is a good thing. Then there was that little wave washer that goes in that recess. And now it doesn't hurt just to get a little bit top and bottom so you get a nice action. Don't want to get so sloppy that it's like dripping out of there, but a little goes a long way. Cool. Ready to install. We're going to put the handlebars on next, and then we can put these controls back onto the bars while they're installed on the motorcycle. Okay. Get these handlebars put on now. This is going to be really slick. I'm all excited about this. Um, especially modified lower clamps. And then we're putting in these new Allen bolts. 85 in the front, 70 in the rear millimeters. Cool. New wave washers, new, new nuts. And then, of course, before putting the nut on the front, make sure that the little cup washer didn't fall off, which this one did. Put that on there prior to installing the new nut. So unlike some motorcycles, with the BMW two-valve handlebar clamps, you just want the gap to be the same all the way across. You don't want to like tighten one tight and 
That's not the way these work. They're just uh, symmetrical and just kind of look from the side to see that the gap is the same. I'm gonna put that uh, grip wedge in now. You kind of feel when it's in place and then slide this guy on. For right now, just snug it down is fine because we're gonna set the exact positioning. I'm gonna put focus on getting the, the uh, brakes bled now. So it's a pretty slick setup here with this uh, stainless brake line straight up from the, con from the uh, junction down here up to this grommet and then go up around through the uh, headlight ear. And I left this loose down here so that I can actually rotate the line to get the, the nicest fit before, before actually tightening up that fitting. And then I've got some new copper crush rings for the banjo bolt. All right, that's a pretty slick setup. Just gonna double check all these. I'm pretty sure I got them all tight last time. Yeah, good. I'm gonna put the bike back up a little higher. So having a completely dry brake system now with this crossover tube can be a little bit of a challenge to get the air out. The hard part is you've got, the, you've got to get fluid down through the caliper up over the crossover and out bleed everything out one bleeder. It's not impossible, but it invariably can be difficult to get all the air out of the line. So, so instead of trying that first and ending up doing what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do what I found works straight away and make this a pretty easy task. So first of all, I'm gonna remove or loosen here for now just the uh, caliper mounting bolts. Take the bottom ones out. I got two pieces of flat steel bar. I think it's 3 16 by one. And it doesn't really matter. It's very close to the same thickness as a brake disc. So I'm just gonna slip that up there, and place the brake disc, and then run a zip tie around it to hold it in place. Perfect, now see these brake pads don't even know that that's not a disc that's in there. Okay, so now the idea is gonna to be to bleed these brakes with this at the highest point. So hopefully we'll get the air to come out and let's give that a, give that a try. I'm just gonna let that dangle here for a bit while we get some brake fluid organized. Okay, so it's a vacuum brake bleeder, and uh, just using compressed air, hook the airline up, and then hold the trigger like so. I can keep it open with that little clip there, and this will create a vacuum inside of this container, and that's where it'll draw the brake fluid. It's so gotta make sure I don't draw any air in and juggle things around. Right now, um, things are fairly safe here. I got the, this bleeder cracked. Just gonna try to cycle some brake, brake fluid through there. And then as we get closer to the end, feel the lever and then we can do some weird gymnastics and get the bleeder screw up high. Should work. Alrighty, let it rip. Instead of work the brake lever a bit, like so, and keep adding fluid as it goes down. You kind of see fluid now coming also through. You start to see fluid coming through the hose here too. So we're making the full circuit pretty much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop that for just a moment. Any, anything like a handle should start pumping the calipers up a little bit. They're moving. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of hold this like this way here. Tension on 
the nipple all the way up. Actually, just gonna push a little bit through with the master cylinder. See if we can get something pumping through. There we go. Things are happening. Cool. Cool. Starting to get a really nice firm brake feel there. So I think we're getting close. I think we got all the air out. Okay, so now we, I got just the calipers put on with a couple of bolts loosely and already got a pretty firm feel. So I'm just going to bleed it sort of the old fashioned way. Pump it up. Like that. Let, let, let open the valve while you compress the lever. Compress. Pump it a few times. Okay, that's a pretty decent lever. Feels solid. And I think I got all the air out. It's pretty awesome. So that's, let me go ahead and take this thing off here. <coughs> And I only used about, uh, maybe just about 250 milliliters of brake fluid. Not that bad for, uh, because we went right to the problem source to begin with. All right, so now that that's done, tidy things up. All right, so now that I'm pretty confident that the, the, the uh, air's out of the brake lines, new fresh brake fluid, I've got to still button that up real quick. And then um, I can take out these fake brake pad or brake discs, the steel shims I put in. So we can put these caps back on too. Two less parts laying around. And, um, but it's about all we can really do now with the front end because we're waiting for the paintwork to come in. And I actually checked on it the other day. They're doing great on it. It's gonna look fantastic, but we need to take, we need to take this back apart to put the front fender on and we can't really finish the wiring or do the turn signals or any of that stuff until we have the, the painted S fairing back. So now we're down to installing the wheel bearings. And that's what's kind of nice about these mono lever models is there's not much to it. They're sealed, they're pre-greased, not much to it at all. You could just smack them in, but I kind of like to heat up the hub a little bit and it expands the aluminum and it makes the bearings just more or less drop in without a lot of violence. I'm just gonna get in here and heat that up. All right, the hub's nice and warm now. And just using a standard bearing driver, should be able to just knock this in without too much effort. Nice solid sound right there. Okay. And then the spacer, which originally came out, drop that in, put the other bearing in. Now you can feel the spacer in there and it should not have any up and down movement. You may be able to dislodge it slightly with your finger, just kind of feel that it moves a tiny, tiny bit. That's, that's all good. Kind of gives you an idea that the bearings are set properly. So now with the wheel bearings installed, normally the next thing would be to install the brake discs and uh, move forward with completing the front end. I'm gonna be replacing the brake discs. The old ones that came off, they're pretty worn out. Uh, but the, unfortunately, the uh, ones that I want to put on are available right at the moment, but they're coming in in the next few days. So on the next video, we'll pick up the brake disc installation and they'll hopefully even be a lot more because I believe that the parts are about done over at the paint shop. So there's lots more to come on Boxer Tube. I'll make sure you subscribe and you'll, you should find a links to uh, all the parts that we referenced on this um, 
or all, all the parts that we used are referenced in the links below and also on our website. So subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already so you can be updated when the next one comes out. And it's been a little bit of a break since the last videos that uh, we produced, but there's some reasons for that that have been, I think some changes we're making with our website, things like that, that have caused some delays. But um, those that are behind us, we're gonna be picking up the series and moving forward. So until next time, thanks for watching, and this is William from Boxer 2 Valve. See you later.